Hello, my name is Jason Grooms, and this PowerPoint will be about genetically modified organisms, GMOs, specifically when it comes to our food. GMOs, what are they? A GMO is any living organism whose genetic material has been artificially modified in a laboratory using genetic engineering technology. It was approved for insulin use in 1992 and then food use in 1996. It is important to remember that this could be an animal, plant, or any microorganism, but again, since we are focusing on food for this PowerPoint, the examples on other slides will be more focused on that topic. Examples of GMOs Corn is one main example of genetically modified crops. There are over 30 different varieties of modified corn, making it the most common genetically modified crop out there. According to the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, most corn is genetically modified to resist pests. The modified corn produces proteins that are toxic to pests, but not humans or livestock. GMO corn is used for food and drinks for humans, but is also used to feed livestock such as chicken and cows. Potatoes are another food that can be genetically modified. Genetically modified potatoes were approved by the Department of Agriculture in 2014 and then the Food and Drug Administration in 2015. Potatoes can be modified for many reasons, such as to prevent bruising on the potato itself or like corn for pest resistance. They can also be modified to produce lower levels of acrylamide when cooked. The purpose of GMOs. The main purpose of GMOs in crops and foods are mainly for resistance against certain pests and diseases, as well as fighting against environmental conditions such as droughts. Another reason for GMOs is to add a nutritional value to food such as golden rice. Genetically modifying things like golden rice can add micronutrients, which are needed in our body to perform a wide range of functions, such as keeping you healthy. A lack of micronutrients in your body is linked to causing major diseases. How are GMOs created? GMO plants and crops are created using a four-step process. Identify, copy, insert, and grow. Step one is identify. First, which crops we want to genetically modify are chosen. Then scientists identify what trait they want the plant to have, such as resistance to pests or diseases. The final stage of step one is to identify a crop that already has that trait, to eventually be used in the crop they want to modify. Step two is copy. After scientists find the gene trait they want to use, they copy that gene. For example, if they are looking for a gene that would provide pest resistance, they would use a gene from a plant that already has it. And copy that gene. Step three is insert. Scientists will then use lab equipment to insert the gene they just copied into the DNA of the plant they want to modify. The new trait does not change any existing traits in the plant. Step four, the final step, is grow. Scientists will then grow the new plant or crop in the laboratory to make sure it has adopted the new gene trait successfully. After proven successful, the new modified plants are then grown in test fields. If proven successful again, the modified plant will then be moved to larger fields, also to be tested. After another successful test and in-depth review from scientists, the modified crop can finally be sold and grown by farmers. Regulations on GMOs in food. GMOs in food are monitored and regulated under strict scrutiny from three major governmental organizations. The first being the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. Their job is to make sure that the foods that have GMO ingredients meet the same strict safety standards as all other foods. The FDA sets and enforces all food and safety standards. The second organization is the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. The EPA is responsible for protecting the environment and human health. They regulate and enforce the safety of substances that protect the genetically modified plants. The third major organization is the Department of Agriculture, the USDA. The USDA's job when it comes to GMOs is to protect agriculture against pests and diseases. They make sure the GMO plants are not harmful to all other plants. The argument against GMOs. Cross-pollination. Many people believe that cross-pollination from GMO crops creates super weeds that affect other plants and crops. But at the same time, GMO crops are under strict regulations by the three major organizations listed on the last slide to ensure all precautions are met and to prevent this from happening.
big businesses. Another argument is that GMO crops put farmers at the mercy of big businesses because after the GMOs are created, farmers must purchase the seeds set by the prices of those big businesses that created the genetically modified crops. The cigarette argument. Back when cigarettes were first becoming big, everyone said there were no adverse health effects or long-term health problems involved with cigarettes, or at least it could not be proven. Today, we know that to not be true. So why couldn't GMOs be the same? Well, for one, GMOs are closely regulated and monitored by the three government departments we mentioned earlier, the FDA, the EPA, and the USDA. Two, today our technology allows us to keep much better data and information and for us to accurately predict problems in the future. Are GMOs and food safe? The answer is yes. And that yes is backed up by science. Science shows that GMOs are safe for humans, plants, and animals alike. There are many health benefits to GMOs, as stated earlier, such as providing much needed micronutrients to our food. GMOs also give our crops a fighting chance against major environmental conditions such as droughts or hurricanes. As stated multiple times earlier, GMOs are under intense regulations and are always being monitored and looked at by the FDA, EPA, and USDA to ensure GMAs remain safe for human and livestock use, but also other plants and crops around it. References. Below are the references used to put together this PowerPoint. Two references come from the FDA itself. One comes from SPH Web. One comes from the online library.wiley.com. And one comes from non-gmoproject.org. Thank you for listening and following along with this PowerPoint. I hope this PowerPoint was able to show you that GMOs in our food are safe.